Pearson relating to the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Amendment, Restrictions on Stock Animal Procedures Bill. The Honourable Mark Pearson. Mr Acting President, I move that leave be given to bring in a bill for an act to amend the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1979 to prohibit mules procedure on sheep and to require the administration of pain relief in certain procedures involving stock animals and for other purposes. Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Amendment open bracket restrictions on stock animals procedures close bracket bill. The question is the uh, uh, motion of the member. All those in favour, please Looking say aye. Those the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Mr Acting President, I present the bill and move that this bill be read a first time and printed. The question... Uh, the question is that the bill be read a first time and printed. All those in favour, please say aye. Those aye. the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Amendment, Restrictions on Stock Animal Procedures Bill 2019, first reading. Mr. Mr Acting President, I move that this bill be now read a second time. The amendment, this bill is an amendment of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1979, number 200. Schedule 1 bracket one close bracket prohibits the mules operation being performed on sheep however a person who does not commit a person does not commit an offence under the proposed action until on or after the 1st of January 2022 schedule one bracket five close bracket provides that in the course of undertaking certain procedures involving stock animals a person must administer an analgesic or other appropriate form of pain relief to the animal in order that have benefit of a defence to certain animal cruelty offences and a, an amendment to schedule two of other legislation Schedule 2 makes consequential amendments to the Veterinary Practices Act 2003 and the Veterinary Practice Regulation 2013 as a result of the pro proposed prohibition of the mules operation. Mr Assistant President, in 1797 the first merino sheep arrived in Australia 220 years ago. The merino sheep has never and will never be able to adapt to the Australian environment and the Australian climate. And what this bill seeks to strike at is ever since that time, certain procedures have been permitted upon stock animals, and in this case in particular sheep, where if they were actually performed on domestic animals, or a foal, a person would face very serious prosecution under the legislation. But there is an exemption in section 24, which has stood there either in the format since 1979 or beforehand, where a person can mutilate farm animals, certain stock animals, in, for the purposes of the mules operation, castration, tail docking, dehorning and beforehand other procedures, yet not face any prosecution under the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act if the procedure was done in a manner which inflicted no unnecessary pain. And this has been based upon a myth, two myths, one of them being that farm animals don't actually feel as much pain as other animals, and another myth that young animals, six months or younger, or in some cases 12 months or younger, do not feel pain as, as much as other animals. Veterinary science, veterinary technical knowledge over time has shown very clearly that these animals feel exactly the same pain or very similar pain to a dog, a cat, a horse, a foal, or other animals, other species that are specifically protected. So if one were to mules a cat, if one were to mules a foal, 
or a dog, you would be prosecuted very severely. But the belief was because of these animals and their behaviour or their age and their reaction to the procedure, it brought about the myth amongst our understanding that these animals actually didn't feel as much pain. But veterinary scientists have made it very clear that, for example, a sheep is a prey animal. And prey animals, in order to survive and evolve, will not show their pain in the same way as a predatory animal would. So therefore, when the lamb is put up onto the cradle on her back, his her back, and then is a, certain procedures are performed, you will hardly hear a bleat. It is difficult to see how much, to perceive much struggle, but when properly analysed by veterinary scientists who understand these animals very well, there, are, there is symptomatology and there is a demonstration of pain and distress. And the pain and distress is there, expressed differently because in evolution, a sheep, a prey animal, if they show a lot of pain and distress, the wolf is watching and it will take out the weakest and it will take out the most, most vulnerable. And this is why these animals have evolved over time to not show this pain and distress. But thankfully, with veterinary science improving as much as it has, we now understand that these animals do feel distress and pain during these procedures. And the, this is one of the main purposes of this bill. It is to now bring that new knowledge, that new veterinary technical knowledge, into the legislation that we have uh, put in place since 1979, where the view was during that time and before that these animals did not feel as much pain. Now we know they do. This bill addresses that concern. This bill addresses that anomaly. The suffering endured by farm animals in undergoing invasive procedures such as mulesing is a grave concern to me. I've been campaigning for the humane treatment of agriculture animals for a number of decades. In particular, I have campaigned for animal industries to develop alternatives to painful procedures, or where that is not available, the provision of pain relief. I'm very pleased to introduce this bill, this bill, which legislates the phasing out by 2022, the cruel practice of mulesing, which is a surgical removal of the breech, tail, skin folds or wrinkles of a sheep. The procedure is usually undertaken on a, on a lamb less than six months of age. The lamb is constrained in a device known as a cradle, while laid prone on its back, a pair of shears sharp shears or other sharp implement, another sharp implement is used to cut away at the skin around the breech area. The bill also mandates the administration of pain relief to, for procedures listed in section 24 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. This includes, includes procedures such as castration, dehorning and tail docking. And recent innovations, as I've said, in, in veterinary medicine means that there are now readily available and affordable analgesics such as trisulfan and other substances for farmed animals. So the very interesting, uh, the very important part of this bill it, is that it will actually assist and protect, when passed, farmers and wool growers from a possible prosecution. Because in section 24, which is the exemption, it says you can do these things to these animals, mulesing, tail docking, etc. But at the end of each section, it says the Director General or the Secretary has made it very clear in a manner which, which uh, in a manner which causes no unnecessary pain. If a pain relief is available, and it is not you, it's readily available and affordable, and is not used, it could be argued that if these procedures are done without the use of that pain relief, it has been done in a manner which has caused unnecessary pain. The, I will clearly point out that mulesing is a procedure which is actually intended to prevent a very serious state of fly strike. And it removes the skin which can become fouled by urine, faeces and dirt, creating an environment where flies can lay their eggs and once hatched, the maggots consume the flesh of the sheep. 
This is known as fly strike, strike and it is a significant welfare problem for the wool industry. What has also become a major ethical issue for the wool industry are the advances in science which make it clear that farmed animals are indeed sentient beings and feel pain and distress. This, th there is no doubt that mulesing is a painful and stressful procedure for the lambs. So the animal activist community has been campaigning for many years to end mulesing. Organisations such, such as the people, people for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Four Paws, the Humane Society, the Interna International and Animal, sorry, Humane Society International and Animal Liberation have engaged in numerous campaigns, including encouraging international consumer boycotts of wool farmers who continue to practice the practice of mulesing. And I think it's very important to be aware that as, as, you could, as I, I tried to uh, table this morning, a petition of, of it's now up to 200, almost 205,000 people in Europe and the United States who are watching what this debate is about. Because the issue here, and this is what this bill tries to address, is that, is that the wool that is, is clipped from sheep in Australia much of it goes around the world and it goes to very, very high up array buyers, uh, retailers such as Hugo Boss, uh, Xenia, Abercrombie and Fitch, etc. And as we would well know that leading up to 2010 and after 2010, there was actually an international lot of Australian wool. Now what this bill will try to address if it is passed, is that when the issue of pain relief, is, when pain is provided for these animals, and when there is now a deadline for mulesing to no longer be permitted as of the 1st of January 2022, this message from Australia, from the wool industry to the world will be very welcome because the world is watching what we are doing in our backyard to animals which provide a fibre which travels through China, being washed and spun, through New Zealand, being knitted and ending up on a Hugo Boss store, in a Hugo Boss store in New York as a garment. The bill is of its time. Animal welfare is now a mainstream concern. New Zealand has introduced a complete ban on mulesing in 2018. And Victoria is introducing changes to the mulesing definition in their Cruelty to Animals Draft Regulations 2019. And if this bill, as during the carriage of this bill through this House, I will be introducing an amendment which will define mulesing in the legislation. Last year I was interviewed for a documentary entitled The True Price of Cuddly Wool, which was recently broadcast on German television. The crew also interviewed international designers and retailers and Australian growers, brokers and researchers about wool traceability, mulesing and animal welfare issues. European consumers are becoming increasingly concerned with our animal welfare in regards to mulesing. A recent study, enti study entitled, uh, quote, Australia's shifting mindset on farm animal welfare, unquote, was commissioned by the Federal Department of Agriculture. The report found that many of the public now support the activist views that animal welfare isn't being sufficiently delivered by the agriculture sector for today's values. Of those surveyed, up to 95% of people view farm animal welfare to be a concern and viewed farm animals as sentient and people want to see reforms made in, in animal welfare. So, if we look at what, hap what had happened with the greyhound racing industry and the report by Justice McHugh, after four inquiries into that industry, Justice McHugh, in his final report, which actually influenced the government in 2015 to announce a, a ban on greyhound racing, the fundamental, the first uh, recommendation by Justice McHugh was to ban greyhound racing, and that is because it had lost a social licence. My view is, is that unless we address this mulesing and remove it, make it no longer acceptable, it 
is becoming and will be seen as a procedure which no longer has a social licence. In an interview with Farm Online, RSPCA Australia Chairperson Gary Humphrey stated, these figures that were gathered by the uh, Federal Department of Agriculture give some numerical perspective to the sleeping giant that is the Australian community's concern about current livestock production practices. As we have seen in the past, vision of practices that cause animals pain and suffering is all that is needed to wake up this giant. For sheep, behavioural changes such as lip curling, teeth grinding, trembling, uh, nostril flaring and abnormal postures have been described in lambs undergoing mulesing, tail docking and castration. Sheep experiencing pain will reduce their feed intake and rumination. They may engage in licking, rubbing or scratching, pa scratching painful areas and they may be reluctant to move. In animal experimentation, researchers have found that in injured animals <coughs> seek out and self-administer pain relievers if they, have made, if they are made available to, him, to them. Knowing this, how can we justify the continued infliction of pain on farmed animals without using analgesia? The company Bayer, which has bought up the rights of distribution, most of the rights of dis distribution to the main pain relief that's used for, for lambs in mulesing, trisulfan is saying that 80 to 85 per cent of wool growers are using it during mulesing. But other sources are saying that only 50 to 55 per cent of wool growers are using it. What this bill will do be a safeguard for the wool growers that are doing the right thing. The wool growers who have seen the writing on the wall and I want to advance the standing of Australia in the world for animal welfare and animal well-being. If we allow some wool growers to continue to undertake these procedures without providing pain relief, this will not assist the wool industry by being recognised in the world by all the major retailers of the world and the animal welfare organisations of the world as being an advanced, progressive country, nation, that embraces their responsibility to the millions, billions of sheep in Australia. <coughs> Animal agriculture industries have convinced successive governments to allow these procedures to occur without pain relief because the costs of analgesia reduced profits made, on the, made off the exploitation of the, animal, of the farmed animals' bodies. Necessary pain for farmed animals has always been an economic test, not a veterinary test. Given that modern veterinary analgesics are now quite cheap, the time has come to mandate pain relief for those common procedures, and that is what this bill seeks to achieve. Now, what is important here is that the is that the retailers of the world are going to be waiting for the response of the New South Wales Parliament to this bill. Because I have been watching this process. I was at a, new, at, at, a, at a function where a senior representative of the company Armani was speaking. And it was being described to him, representing Armani, of the, the apparent necessity to mules. And only about two sentences into the conversation, the representative of, of this high upper, al, upper A company, Armani, said, I'm a businessman. Beautiful, soft, beautiful, soft, delicate wool in my garments and my suits for men and, 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 and beautiful garments for women hanging on my shelf. Next to it, a bleeding, gaping wound, not acceptable. I look after my consumers. If you do not fix <coughs> this blood next to this beautiful wool that I want to use for my garments, I will go elsewhere. So not only is this bill going to obviously address welfare for millions and millions of animals under our care, control and supervision, under our watch, 
it will seriously go towards lifting up the standing of animal welfare and animal protection of Australia as a nation. And it is for all those reasons I commend this bill to the House and I seek the members' support. Thank you.